Hello everyone, I'm Harris and this is a doctor's guide to aloe vera. Most people will have heard of aloe vera and this is a fantastic plant with a lot of medicinal properties, not only for topical applications, but also for oral as well. So in this video, we're going to be talking about aloe vera, its history, its medicinal properties, and summarize the more in-depth blog post about aloe vera that I've written on elysiumherbals.com. So let's start. Native to the Arabian Peninsula, this evergreen perennial has become a common house plant due to its ruggedness. It can survive a long time without water because evolutionarily where it came from and so it is a fantastic house plant because of the low maintenance required to keep it healthy. Now aloe vera has been used historically for thousands of years and the ancient Egyptians knew about its medicinal properties. You can find it in ancient uh, papyrus writing, uh, ancient Roman writing and all the way up to present time. So humans have known about the medicinal properties of this plant for a very long time and we're going to discuss some of them in this video. Aloe vera is packed full of vitamins, minerals and a few other interesting molecules that we're going to talk about. Let's go through some of the vitamins. So in this you'll find vitamin A, C and E and B12. There's also folic acid and choline. Now if you're not too clued up on vitamins then I suggest you watch my video going through vitamins and minerals and that'll give you a bit of understanding of what vitamins do, what minerals do, what effect they have in the body, why some people may need supplementation on them and why others won't. It's also packed full of minerals like magnesium, copper, with calcium, manganese, sodium, zinc. There's a whole host of minerals in here and again you'll find the full list of them on the blog post. And there's a few more interesting molecules as well that we're going to talk about. You have saponins which is something that you'll find in a herb called Bacopa monnieri, a nootropic. Again there's a blog post on that on the website. And there's also something called acimanin which has a really important part to play in the medicinal properties of this plant. So let's start off with the most common known medicinal property of aloe vera and that is its anti-inflammatory effect. I know very well what this bad boy can do because the first time I ever used this plant was due to a self-inflicted sunburn through my stupidity of not using any sun cream on a holiday I was with Adam in Mexico and I went to the local shop, asked the shopkeeper if he had any uh, moisturisers or soothing um, compounds that I could use, any products and he recommended I use a aloe vera gel which is a concentrated form of aloe vera and I used it and I was shocked at how good it was at soothing my skin and helping dampen down the burning sensation and ever since then I've always kept a bottle of aloe vera gel in my bedroom and I use it regularly uh, for any skin irritation I have, any mild burns, although be careful with some severe burns and I'll discuss why. So the reason this has an anti-inflammatory effect is because it inhibits some key inflammatory molecules that signal to your body to stop the inflammatory process. In particular it shows to inhibit something called prostaglandin E2 and some of the interleukins as well and these are pro-inflammatory molecules, molecules that stimulate that inflammatory process that we want to stop. Interestingly there's also research that shows that aloe vera can stimulate collagen Collagen is really important for the integrity of our skin and so the research has shown that the stimulation of collagen by aloe vera can increase some of the cross-linking and therefore potentially improve healing. Now there's some conflicting evidence against it as well and there's a meta-analysis that you can read on the website so there's not a definitive answer as to whether aloe vera can help with burns but there's certainly some research that show it might do and that's certainly an area that I think needs a bit more research looking into it for a definitive answer. Next up we've got the anti-diabetic properties of aloe vera. Now not many people knew about this and it was something that was new to me when I started researching about this plant but there seems to be a significant evidence base that shows oral aloe vera ingestion can have a hypoglycemic effect, so a blood sugar lowering effect. There was a study in 1996 which took a group of women, split them into a group, one taking a placebo and one taking aloe vera orally 
All of these women were diabetics, but none of them were on anti-diabetic medication. The group on aloe vera were given a tablespoon twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening, whilst the control group was given a placebo, and this was done over a period of two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, the placebo group showed no change in blood sugar levels, whereas the group taking the aloe vera showed a statistically significant decrease in not only blood sugar levels, but also triglyceride levels as well. There was a very similar study conducted again in 1996, again looking at a group of women who were diabetic, and in this group of women, they were on anti-diabetic medication. Very similarly, one group were given a placebo, and other group were given aloe vera. Now, both groups were also on an anti-diabetic medication as well, and similarly to the first research done, the group given the control showed no improvement in their blood glucose, whereas the group on aloe vera showed a drop in their blood sugar levels, and a drop in their triglyceride levels again. More recent research was in 2001, this time on mice, and this was a similar research done to the ones on humans where there was a group of mice that were on a diabetic medication and a group of mice that were given aloe vera. And confirming the studies on the humans, the group given aloe vera showed greater reduction in their blood sugar levels. So clearly the evidence is promising that aloe vera may have an anti-glycemic effect. However, there aren't a great number of studies and I think for more confidence in recommending aloe vera there needs to be more up-to-date studies, more double-blinded placebo control studies with larger sample sizes and of course with any use of herb, spice or botany the best thing to do would be to speak to your medical practitioner especially if you're a diabetic who is already on medication because there is risk of having hypoglycemia which is a too big a drop in your blood sugar levels so always speak to a medical professional before taking anything. Now we've spoken about anti-diabetic properties, we've spoken about the anti-inflammatory effects but there are other few interesting things that some people claim aloe vera can exhibit. Number one, it can keep produce fresh. There is a very interesting paper done by Cambridge University on which aloe vera was rubbed on top of tomatoes and that kept the tomato fresh, which they claim may show a antibacterial, antiviral property, keeping that produce fresh. There's also evidence to show that aloe vera ingestion may improve indigestion and there is also some papers out there that show there may be a laxative effect with aloe vera. All of this means though that people with conditions that are similar to those effects, so people who may have inflammatory bowel disease, people who may have stomach problems, they should be very wary and cautious about taking aloe vera because it can worsen their condition. Also very careful for anyone who is pregnant, for children as well, there just isn't the depth of evidence there to show that it's safe in pregnant women, women who are breastfeeding. So I would advise a caution in those groups, cautioning people who are diabetic, and please, please, please speak to your medical practitioner before you take any supplement. So aloe vera, it's an excellent house plant. It's fantastic looking and it's rugged, which means that no matter how often you forget to water it, which inevitably will do, this will survive. It has some anti-inflammatory properties. There is some evidence on its anti-diabetic properties as well. And this is a product that you'll see commercially in a lot of food and drinks as well. Now I'd love to hear from anyone who uses aloe vera, whether you use it for its taste or its medicinal properties, or whether you even knew that it had medicinal properties. As always, please comment on your thoughts on this video, and if there's anything you'd like me to cover, please let us know. If you'd like to know a bit more about aloe vera and to check out all of our sources that I've mentioned and the studies that I've mentioned, then please visit elysiumherbals.com where you can find a more in-depth blog on what I've spoken about today. As always, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and visit the website for more information. Thank you.